Eric Toll is a real Flyco customer, not a paid celebrity. So to help tell the story, we hired some local performers. I was flying around one day. And a bird flew into my cockpit. The bird exploded and my plane went down. Thanks to Flyco, I was back on my feet in no time. Flyco. 15 minutes or more could save you 15% or more on plane insurance. Hi. My name is Marty Leanwood, and I make documentaries. Several years ago when I was in film school, I came across a book called Catch-22, Joseph Heller's landmark nonfiction account of a squadron of fighter pilots during World War II. Well, immediately I was captivated by this memoir, but I couldn't help wondering, what did happen to all those people after the war ended? Well now, many years later, with several award-winning documentaries under my belt, I finally had the chance to interview those people and make the movie that I present to you now. My first goal is to interview the most prominent figure in the book, Captain John Yossarian, who I discovered had been living a reclusive life as a hermit in the woods for the past 17 years. I must admit it was difficult, but I finally tracked him down and coaxed him into giving an interview. Alright, thank you for speaking with me today, Mr. Yossarian. My pleasure. Alright, now my first question is, um, how old are you? Ninety-three and a half. Alrighty, uh, my next question is, what have you been up to, uh, since the war ended 63 years ago? Well, after I got back in the U.S., after hiding in several European countries, I became very much involved in the civil rights movement, and subsequently joined the Black Panthers. After the 60s, I moved on to a new stage in my life. I began working at McDonald's. Then after I got fired 17 years ago, I realized I was to follow my grandest dream, to become a professional hermit. And then I moved out into these hills, and I've been living off various woodland creatures and stray dogs ever since. Very interesting, you've had a very eventful life. Now, um about this portion of your life. How do you like living out in these hills as opposed to regular society? What hills? Well, the ones you live in now. When? Now! I don't live in the hills now. But I thought you just said you did. I know I do. You know you do what? Live in the hills. Well, anyway, uh, back to my questions here. Um, during your time living as a hermit, did you ever consider rejoining society? Nope. Not at all? Nope. Well, okay, uh, anyway... Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I have some very important business to attend to. And what business is that? What? I said, what business is that? What business? YOURS! Squirrel. What was that? Squirrel! <laughs> hey! What are you doing? Get back here! What are you doing? Stop! That, that's my car! Hey! Hey! That's my car! What are you doing? Hey! That's my car!
Look what he did to my car. Oh God, what do you do? Hey! Hey! Oh. Forget about it. While my interview with Captain Yosarin was not entirely successful, I was not deterred, and I decided to press on, turning my attention to another prominent character in the book, Nate Lee's Whore. Alrighty, thank you for being here today, Mrs. Whore. I have a name, you know! Uh, nobody cares. And now my first question, Mrs. Whore. What have you been up to for the past 60 years? Well, I've been making millions of dollars. I've been whoring, you twit. Seriously, what'd you think I was doing, boy? Right. Still whoring. That's disgusting. How old are you? I'm 86. 86. That's awful. And people still hire you? Yes, um, you also? Right. Anyway, um... I also saw you had that sign with you when I picked you up today. Um, what is that for? Well, that's something I'm extremely proud of. You see, all these years working as a whore have understandably left me with many horrible venereal diseases. So I devote a lot of my corner time to educating the new and upcoming whores on the subject. And it gives me a sense that I'm doing good in the world, you know? But you're still whoring while you promote this. Yeah. Don't you find that at all the least bit contradictory? Not at all. Right, and uh, now for my final question. Um, why did you want to kill Yosarian upon hearing the news of Nately's death? Well, I, I don't know. I guess I just... I took the whole situation a little bit too hard. I mean, Edward was the only man that ever let me sleep. And that's all I ever really wanted was to sleep. And when Yosarian told me the news, I guess I just kind of blamed him. But I mean... Years have passed, and, well, my bread knife's gotten dulled, and all the emotional scars have healed, so I guess I can forgive him now. Oh, there he is!